Well, I hope the weather holds. Yep, the weather looks good for today. It's gonna be a great day to go look for eagles. So I'm here with Kate Slankert, avian biologist. And we've had you on the show several times, but today it's about bald eagles. Tell me a little bit about what we did today. We just completed our helicopter survey for bald eagles. This is a really efficient way for us to look for eagle nests. And we fly most of the western part of the state where our eagle nests are most dense and basically have our annual count that way. The annual count, what are you counting? You're counting not birds, but actual nest sites, right? Right, we're looking for active nests, and so a nest is active if it has adult eagles at it. And we basically look at the locations that we knew eagles nested the year before, and while we're out doing that, we're looking for new locations as well. All right, put out the right, put out the left. Ready to start, everybody ready? Ready. Okay, here we go. So how are the eagles doing in the state of Kentucky? They're doing great. In 1986, we had our first nest. There was many, many years where we didn't have any eagles nesting in Kentucky. And then about when I started my job in 2007, we had 50 or so nests. And last year, we counted 176 nests statewide. They're doing really good. Wow. All right, almost five miles up there, so we're doing good. Yeah. I get phone calls from people and they say, do you know we have bald eagles in Kentucky? And I say, well, yeah, look up more often. If you're out on the water, you can see bald eagles quite easily nowadays. So you probably still want an individual, if they have a piece of property or they come by a bald eagle's nest and they're sure, hey, that's a bald eagle's nest, you probably still want them to call you and let you know. Yeah, we still keep track of each nest statewide. And um, sometimes folks get afraid to call us and let us know they have an eagle nest. They feel like we're gonna come shut their farm down or something <laughs> like that. You know, nowadays it's really not a big deal to have an eagle nest on your property. The birds do fine with activities that were going on before they were there. We're not going to stop you from planting your corn or things like that. And so don't be afraid to call us and let us know if you have an eagle nest so we can monitor it. We're over Elkhorn Creek looking for an eagle nest that somebody called in. This would be a new one to know of one up the river a little ways, but we think the birds may have moved over here. And this is a great time of year to do it because the canopy is not filled in on the trees yet. You can really see down, and this is the time they have their eggs, correct? Right, yeah, we plant it before the leaves are on the trees. Easier to see the nest that way, and most of their birds are sitting on eggs right now. You're not counting eggs or eaglets. It's all about active nests, and you know about how many eggs are gonna be produced and how many will actually make it to adulthood, right? Usually eagles will lay one to three eggs and their nesting season starts usually in February and the chicks will fledge in May or June. So what type of food source do eagles predominantly use? They eat mostly fish, but they'll also eat waterfowl, roadkill, rabbits, turtles, you know, anything they can get their talons on. But they mostly nest close to water because fish are a big food source for them. I see a nest out here. It doesn't quite look big enough for an eagle nest. But... Okay, got it about 2.30. So either eagles have started building a nest here or that may be a hawk nest, but let's grab a coordinate for it. Okay. We take coordinates for each nest and we keep a database and so that way we can keep an eye on them from year to year and see how they're doing. We mark them from the helicopter so we can get exact coordinates. But if you see a bald eagle, don't necessarily need to call the department anymore. Right. There's enough bald eagles that you get calls every day, I'm guessing, saying, hey, it's all bald eagle. Yeah, we have the fortunate problem where there's just too many birds to keep track of anymore. <laughs> and so we do not keep track of just where an eagle is seen. And we really only need to be called if you find a nest. Most of the time, eagles will use the same nest year after year. And a lot of times, we'll be sitting in the same nest. But if that nest got blown out in a storm or something like that, then we look for a new one. Sometimes we'll just spot nests in between points too, so I'm always looking. The bald eagle at one point in time was endangered. Right. And it's studies like this that actually took the bald eagle off the endangered list, right? Because we know we have a thriving population. Exactly, and so we're monitoring them to make sure that they aren't gonna become endangered again. This is part of the post-delisting endangered species monitoring. And then also because um, they're such a good indicator of environmental quality. So for instance, bald eagles declined in the past because DDT was an issue. And um, this way, when we keep track of nest numbers, we can make sure there's not another issue like that out in the environment. Okay, it's right out the left window, that big sycamore tree. 
And it's got a bird on it. Looks like it's sitting on eggs. Pretty good sized nest, not as big as some of them we see. This is one of several we have on the Kentucky River. See, she's got plenty of room in that nest for chicks. Eagle chicks are big, so that's why the nests have to be so big. Those chicks need room to grow up. See, the nest is made of sticks. The inside of the nest is oftentimes grass, straw. Sometimes I'll even pick up things like old corn cobs and shucks out of the fields. Anything soft for bedding for the chicks. Okay, so she's incubating. Say she, but actually it could be a he. Both male and female bald eagles will incubate. The female does a little bit more incubation than the male, though. But what we're looking for is the behavior in the bird. This bird's sitting really tight to the eggs. The eggs would have hatched, and if there were small chicks there, the bird would be sitting up a little bit more and often putting its head down to feed the young. So the bird's clearly sitting on eggs still. Probably laid these eggs in February, maybe early March. That's a pretty typical timeline for Central Kentucky. So the long-term prognosis for bald eagles, I'm assuming they're just going to continue to grow, right? Yeah, they're going to continue to do well, hopefully. And, you know, at some point we may find that we've kind of hit a carrying capacity or as many eagles as we can fit in the state. But I don't think we're close to that. I think we've got plenty of room for growth still. Well, as an avian biologist that gets to work with birds of prey and especially eagles, you may have the coolest job in the state. I think so. Well, thanks for everything you do. Thanks for having me.